So we've looked at enthalpy changes and the standard reaction enthalpies, um, but one of the things that we need to know how to do is how do we actually measure this? How do we figure out that if I have a reaction, uh, how much heat it releases or how much heat it absorbs? And so the technique that's used for this is called calorimetry. Um, and so calorimetry uh, is basically a method for measuring the heat flow in or out of a reaction. And basically it works like this. Uh, we basically do a chemical reaction inside of a device called a calorimeter. Okay, And so a calorimeter is basically a container that conducts heat very poorly and contains the reactants and later on the products and water. And so over on the right I have a picture of, a, of what's called a coffee cup calorimeter, one, so one you can sort of build yourself. Uh, and so it's made up of two styrofoam cups and so the styrofoam cups are nested uh, inside of each other. Now styrofoam is a very poor conductor of heat by nesting them together. They create a little air gap in between which makes them an even worse conductor of heat. And so that means that whatever the temperature of the, the, the solution the reaction mixture, the water and the, the, the products and reactants inside is that very, very little heat is able to escape out of the, uh, through the, through the, 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 the coffee cup, the calorimeter, very little heat is able to go into it. And so uh, what that ends up meaning is that pretty much all of the heat that's released or absorbed by the reaction is released or absorbed by the, from the water that's inside the calorimeter. And so we've filled up the, the calorimeter with water in here. We've stuck a thermometer inside this to measure the temperature of the water. And typically there also is a little stirrer that's in here uh, that you sort of move up and down to make sure that, uh, that the heat is evenly distributed throughout the water. Because otherwise what will tend to happen is you'll end up with the, the warmer water near the top and the cooler water near the bottom. And so then, then your temperature measurements aren't very accurate. But you keep it stirred up nicely in and you'll have a nice measurement here. So here's sort of what happens. So you, you have this calorimeter, it's all sealed up, very difficult for heat to enter or leave the whole system here. You start the reaction. Well, when you start the reaction, heat is either removed from the water or flows into the water. So if it is an exothermic reaction, then the heat is going to flow from the reaction into the water. Remember, exothermic is going to have a negative delta H naught. And so because there's a negative one, the reaction loses energy and therefore the water gains energy. And so then heat flows into the water, the water's temperature rises. If you had an endothermic reaction, then heat's going to flow from the water into the reactants and products, into the chemical system. And so because it's flowing in, that means the water has to lose energy and so the water's temperature would drop. So this heat flow in or out of the water uh, from the reaction system causes the temperature of the water to change. We can then, by measuring the temperature on the thermometer, use the specific heat equation. Ah, if you remember those guys here, Q equals Cm delta T if there's a temperature change, which usually would be here. And if for some reason there was a phase change, we'd have to use our Q equals MH, uh, HL for a latent heat right here. But normally it's going to be Cm delta T for a temperature change. But we can use those equations to find the amount of heat that's entered or left the water. Because remember this capital Q is no different than the lowercase Q that we used. But we can find that total heat and then once we have that total heat, we can then figure out um, uh, what we need to know for this. Uh, typically what we'll use is we're going to use the fact that remember our delta H naught has units of kilojoules per mole of reaction. And so if we can find the number of moles of reaction, we'll call that N, and we can find the Q kilojoules right here, we can simply take the number of kilojoules, divide it by the number of moles reaction, and then that will give us delta H uh, for a delta H naught to figure this out here. Now, as we said before, uh, the calorimeter is well insulated. It's a closed system. And so that means that pretty much all of the Q that's here is going to go into our into this temperature rise or this temperature fall as we go through this. And so that we don't have to worry about loss to the outside surrounding we sort of limit ourselves to just the water as our surroundings here, which makes the whole calorimeter work. And so that's the idea behind a calorimeter. So let's look at an example of how we might uh, do a, a problem that involved a calorimeter. So let's suppose that I had a 0.22 grams of methane, CH4, that we're going to burn in a calorimeter uh, containing 450 grams of 25.0 degrees Celsius water. And so it says that after the reaction was complete, the temperature of the water was now 30.8 degrees Celsius. What is the enthalpy of reaction? So we're trying to find what is delta H naught for this particular reaction. Problem is, it doesn't tell us the reaction. It just says it's 
means methane is burned. Well, we know though if it's burned, it's a combustion reaction. And so that means that we have CH4 methane plus oxygen. And so if we look at our combustion a reaction, remember the combustion reactions make oxides with both elements. And so we'll have CO2 plus H2O. So that would be on your predicting reaction products section, if you remember that from on back. So now we need to balance the equation here. And so balancing the equation, we have one carbon currently, one carbon on the right. Uh, we have a one hydrogen that's over there. Uh, sorry, we have one oxygen in the H2O, and so uh, two hydrogens and four on this side. So that means we're going to put a two out here. And so once we've got the two out there, that's now going to give us uh, oxygen-wise, we have two oxygens here, then two oxygens here is total is four. So I'll have to put a two out here. And so I think this should be it. So CH4 plus 2O2 yields CO2 plus 2H2O. And so this is the reaction that we want to find our delta H naught for, um, our enthalpy reaction. So we said to figure that out, we got to know two things. That we're going to need to know what Q is, the amount of heat that has flowed in or out of the system, and we need to know the number of moles of reaction. If we can figure out those two things, we should be able to figure out what the uh, enthalpy of reaction is. So first, let's look at figuring out, let's try that moles of reaction, because we know we have 0.22 grams of methane. Um, it doesn't say uh, how much oxygen, but it says that amount is burned, so we know that's the amount that was reacted, so we don't have to figure out the limiting reagent here. So we start with 0.22 grams of CH4. And so we want to convert to moles reaction. And so we want to say grams CH4 and then moles CH4. And so CH4 is one carbon, 12.01 plus four hydrogens, 4.04, .04, gives a total of 16.05. And so there's 16.05 grams in one mole of this. That cancels mole or cancels gram CH4. We now want to go from moles of CH4 to moles of reaction. And so uh, CH4 is a coefficient of one. And so that's one to one for the mole ratio between CH4 and reaction. And so once we've got that, that should be enough to figure out our moles reaction. So 0.22 times one times one divided by 16.05 divided by one. Put that in the calculator and we get 0 0.01370700. Five moles reaction. Don't worry about sig figs just yet because we're only part way done. So the next thing we need to do is we need to figure out what Q is. Now we know when this methane is burned, um, we pretty certain that since it's being burned, this is going to be exothermic. Um, we don't know 100%. Uh, actually, we do know 100% because look at the temperature change. It goes from 25 degrees Celsius to 30.8. The temperature of the water increased, which meant heat flowed out of the reaction into the surroundings, into the water, and so that meant that it must be an exothermic reaction. So we should expect a positive value for Q, um, or sorry, a, a negative value for Q because there's heat flowing out of the reaction into the water. And so remember that the, whatever happens to the water, the opposite happens to the reaction. So the reaction lost heat because it flowed into the water. So that's why it's going to end up being negative here. Um, so setting this up, from the water's perspective, though, Q is going to be positive. But from the reaction's perspective, Q is going to be negative. So, um, <clears throat> So let's take a look at this from uh, our reaction set point. So Q is going to equal to CM delta T because we had a temperature change here. So let's just set this up. So Q is equal to C. Well, it says this is contained 450 grams of 25 degrees Celsius water. Well, specific heat of water when it's a liquid is just one. The mass, it says, of the water is 450 grams. Notice that we use the water here because this calculation is about the temperature change of the water. And so we have to be using the mass the water as opposed to the CH4 where we were looking at moles reaction and so the water that's in this reaction is not the water it says it starts with it says the calorimeter contains the 450 grams of water this may produce water as the as the process here but unless we're given some indication that that's that's sort of part of what we have here really we're not going to pay a lot of attention to that we're going to pay attention only to the water that's in the calorimeter that it specifies so 450 grams because we do want to be in grams and then delta T, delta T is the change in temperature. So change in temperature is final minus original temperature. Well, it ends up at 30.8 degrees Celsius. It started at 25.0 degrees Celsius. So 30.8 minus 25. So that should end up being, what, just 
once we do that here. And so we can find our Q. So 1 times 450 times 5.8. And so doing that is uh, 2,610 calories. Hmm, we have one little problem here, though. This isn't calories, but we want it in kilojoules. Well, in a case of a calorimetry um, uh, problem, a case where you're trying to use one here, it's easier to use calories when you're dealing with water because you get this nice one for the value that's right here. But since the other reactions, we're always doing delta H naught in kilojoules, we're just going to have to do a unit conversion. And so we'll just start off with our 2610 calories. Now we're going to set up a conversion here. We want to go from calories to first joules. That uh, if we look at our conversion table, we can see that one calorie is 4.184 uh, joules. That's going to cancel calories. Now we have joules, but we want kilojoules. So we're going to put joules down here. We're going to put kilojoules on top. Well, there are a thousand joules in one kilojoule because the one of the prefix gets a one. And so that's going to cancel joules down here. So 2610 times 4.184 divided by 1000 ends up being 10.9 2024 kilojoules is going to be the amount of heat that flowed into the water. And so if that's the amount of heat that flowed into the water, then that meant negative 10.92 kilojoules flowed out of the reaction. And so because we're looking for the enthalpy of the reaction, we're interested in Q for the reaction. And so that means when we find our delta H here, we're going to have to use what it is for the reaction. And so this is going to be equal to said Q kilojoules, which we just said has to be negative 10.92024. What we got? Yep, 024, 92. 024 kilojoules, kilojoules, divided by the number of moles reaction. And so we figured out that's this number right here. So 0 0.01370 no rounding because we're not to the end of the problem. And so when we do this right here, we get that uh, our delta H naught is going to be equal to... Um, Negative 796, 796 uh, point six eight kilojoules per mole. Now, rounding-wise, let's take a look at what we had here. We started off with two things. We had the 0.22 with two sig figs, which means this should have two sig figs right there. And so that means this should have two sig figs right there. We started off on our Q equals CM delta T with one is infinite sig figs. The 450 has two sig figs right here. Uh, our answer here, because we're subtracting, we look at the last place, the tenths place, that should have two sig figs. So that means that our value for 2610 should have two sig figs, which means this has two sig figs. And so that means they both have two sig figs. And so our answer should have two. And so that's going to round the tens place here. And so our delta H naught for this reaction is going to be negative 800 kilojoules per mole. And so that is how you can use the results from a calorimeter to figure out what is um, the enthalpy of reaction for a particular reaction. So let's look at another one. 11.2 grams of potassium nitrate is dissolved in 250 grams of water with the net ionic equation of KNO3 solid uh, is broken down into K plus and NO3 minus, both in aqueous ions and aqueous solution. Um, and so doing so causes the water temperature to drop from 21.2 degrees Celsius to 17.3. What is delta H naught for this reaction? So uh, same way we sort of did before, we've got to find two things. We're going to need to figure out what are the number of moles of reaction and what is the um, and what is our Q for the reaction? And then once we have that, we know that this guy is going to be equal to Q over um, n moles reaction that we can use here. So let's look at figuring out the moles of reaction first, because um, we only have one reactant, the the potassium nitrate. So we're going to start with that. So we say 11.2 grams uh, KNO3, because we already have the equation balanced here, makes it a little easier for us. And so uh, doing this, we want to uh, cancel grams of potassium nitrate. We want to go to moles of potassium nitrate, KNO3. And so uh, for this, that's one potassium plus one nitrogen plus three oxygens. Add that up, I get 101.11. .11. 
101.11 grams per mole and that gives us moles of potassium nitrate and then that cancels that out. So now we want to get rid of moles of potassium nitrate and we want to go to moles of reaction and so we look at potassium nitrate. Well, this is the simplest equation ever because it's all got ones out as the coefficients in front of everything. So one mole reaction to one mole potassium nitrate. And so that should give us our moles reaction. So 11.2 times one times one divided by 101.11. And so doing so, I end up finding the number of moles of reaction 0 0.11. 0.7704488 moles reaction right here. So we have that. Next step is then going to be to go ahead and see if we can figure out what is our Q. So for our Q, we know that we're going to use our Q equals CM delta T. So we have um, Q here first. So Q equals uh, C for this case is uh, what's our substance that uh, the heat is flowing into or out of. Uh, it's going to be water because we have water in our calorimeter in this case. So it's going to be C is 1 times the mass of the water is 250 grams because we want that in grams. So 250 grams times delta T. And so in this case, the temperature drops from 21.2 to 17.3. So it's always final minus original. So here we're going to take 17.3 minus 21.2. And so uh, doing this, 17.3 uh, minus 21.2 ends up being, let's see, negative 3.9. So 1 times 250 times negative 3.9. And so we get Q in this case to be equal to negative 975 calories right here. Now, which makes sense would be negative. The water is cooling down here. Um, now it's in calories. We do need it to be in kilojoules for this to work out um, because that is the unit that we want for our delta H naught. And so um, for this, we're just going to set up our conversion factor, conversion table, 975 calories. Uh, then we want to go from um, calories to joules. So one calorie is 4.18 for joules and then that cancels calories out. We then want to go from joules to kilojoules and so 1,000 joules because kilo is 1,000 and the prefix gets a 1 and so we're going to multiply those out. So nine, negative 975 times 4.184 divided by 1,000 ends up being something like negative 4,074 kilojoules. Now um, that is the amount of heat lost by the water and so if the water has lost this much heat that means it must have flowed into the reaction so that means that the reaction system had to have gained that much heat. So Q for the reaction system is going to be positive 4.0794 and so when we set this up for to figure out our delta H naught then we're going to end up saying uh, Q, which is positive 4.079 uh, uh, 4 kilojoules divided by the number of moles reaction, which we already figured out here, 0 0.11077044 moles of reaction. And so when we do that, we're going to get our final delta H naught uh, to end up being uh, 36.828 is what I get here. Now, sig fig wise, uh, let's see the... 11.2 has got three sig figs, so that means that this guy should have one, two, three sig figs right here. The 250 uh, is two sig figs. The temperature change is going to end up being uh, also two sig figs, so that means this guy should have two sig figs down here. So that means two sig figs should be our answer. So if the unrounded was uh, 36.828 kilojoules per mole, around two sig figs would be just 37. So 37 kilojoules per mole of reaction would be our final answer for our enthalpy of this or enthalpy change for this particular reaction. So that's how we do that one. It is possible to have a calorimeter with a substance that does not water in it. And this especially tends to happen in cases where you're doing reactions um, in 
uh, in solution, like when they're both in aqueous solution and you react things together, or you put something into something in aqueous solution, oftentimes you can just measure the temperature change of the solution, and that will give you enough information to uh, basically be able to figure out what your enthalpy changes are. So in this case, we have a 7.0 gram piece of sodium placed in a calorimeter with 400 milliliters of a one molar sulfuric acid, and doing so results in a temperature increase of 21 degrees Celsius. Um, couple more pieces of information we need here. The resulting solution has a density of 1.84 grams per milliliter and a specific heat of 1.35 calories per gram. Because in this case, since our, so, since our, our liquid here that the heat is flowing into is basically the water that's surrounding the solution, uh, but it's really the solution as a whole. We can't just use one for our specific heat. We have to use this 1.35, and because that we have the volume of this, we're going to need a density to figure out the mass, because it's not like water where we can just say, hey, the density is one gram per milliliter and convert it that way. Uh, so we're going to need this 1.84 as the density here. So this would be a rather, relatively, relatively complex calorimetry problem. Uh, so let's take a look at this. First step is we do need to write and balance out the chemical equation. We can't do anything else unless we have that done. And so it says that we have a piece of sodium in A that is reacted with 400 milliliters of sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid, H2SO4. All right. Now, this particular reaction looks to be a single displacement reaction. So the sodium would normally want to be a cation in a reaction, so it's going to go with the sulfate. So we're going to end up with NaSO4. Uh, sodium is plus 1 for its oxidation number. Sulfate is negative 2, so that means we've got to put Na2SO4 to balance the valences. And then that kicks out poor hydrogen is left over. Now hydrogen ends in GEN, and so as a gas it's going to be H2. And so we have H2 for that one right there. Now we still have to balance the equation. And so to balance this out, we have one sodium on the left, two sodiums on the right. So we'll put a two out here to make that work here. We have two hydrogens on the left, two hydrogens on the right, uh, one sulfate on the left, one sulfate on the right. So this balances out. So just uh, two Na plus H2SO4 yields uh, Na2SO4 plus H2. Now, just as we did before, we are, know that we are going to need uh, to find delta H naught, and so to do that we'll have to find what the moles of reaction are, and the moles of reaction and the heat uh, change, what Q is for our solution. Um, so let's look at finding what um, what our moles of reaction are. So it says a 7.0 gram piece of sodium placed in a calorimeter with 400 milliliters of one molar sulfuric acid. Hmm. We don't really know what our limiting reagent is going to be here. So uh, we're going to have to figure that out. Now, to do that, we'd have to know the amounts of each one. Well, we know the amount of sodium. It's 7 grams. We don't necessarily know the amount of sulfuric acid, but we can figure it out because it tells us that we have 400 milliliters of a 1 molar solution. And so we know that molarity is moles of solute over liters of solution. And so since we have a one molar solution, we should be able to figure out how many moles of sulfuric acid. So we'll say X moles of H2SO4 divided by the number of liters of solution. And so in this case, they're 400 milliliters. Convert that over and that becomes just 0.4 milliliters. So 0.4 times one, oh, that made that easy. So we start off with just 0.4 moles of H2SO4. And with that, we should be able to find the limiting reagent. And so we'll see whether it's this or whether it's sodium. So um, for this one right here, we're going to go from moles H2SO4 to moles of what we want, which is sodium. To convert it over here, well, sodium has a 2 out front, H2SO4 has just a 1, so that's this one right here. And then now we got sodium, so moles of Na, grams of Na right here. And so uh, let's see, 1 mole of sodium, and then we look on the periodic table, sodium is 22.99. 22.99 right here. So if we do this math, it comes out to be 18.392 grams of sodium. So do we have 18.392 grams of sodium 
We do not. We only have 7.0 grams of sodium, so sodium limits. And so I'm just going to erase this for right now because we just need to figure this out before we get started. Uh, but we do know that sodium is going to limit the reaction, so we're going to start with the 7 grams of uh, sodium to do this. But you always do need to check that if you do not know which one um, is the limiting reagent, because it doesn't say that 7 grams of sodium completely reacts. It says that 7 gram piece of sodium is placed in the calorimeter. So we really don't know which one is uh, limiting the reaction until we just did right there, until we figure it out. So let's start this over. 7.0 grams in a, we know we're going to start with that. And so we want to figure out moles of reaction. So we say grams of sodium to moles of sodium. And so one mole of sodium, we already figured out 22.99 grams of sodium. So that's going to cancel gram sodium, takes us to moles sodium. We have moles of sodium. We want to go to moles of reaction. And so look Looking at this, we say moles sodium is going to be 2 because there's a 2 out for the coefficient. Moles reaction is always 1. And so uh, that should give us moles reaction. And when we do that, 7.0 times 1 divided by 22.99 divided by 2. And so I get uh, 0.15, 0.15 uh, moles of reaction. All right, so we have that figured out. Next step is going to figure out our heat. So for our heat, we know this, that Q equals Cm delta T. So Q equals C, specific heat. It's not water, so we're going to have to use specific heat that it tells us here, 1.35. 1.35 units are calories per gram, which we expect, times the mass. The mass of our solution, well, it tells us they're 400 milliliters, but we need grams. But it also tells us it has a density of 1.84 grams per milliliter. And so for this, we're going to have to say, all right, well, the density is the mass per unit volume. And so uh, that means the density is 1.84 is going to be the mass divided by the volume. So it's going to be the mass divided by the volume, which is 400. So to solve for the mass, we do 400 times 1.84. And so I'll just put that in here. Might as well put it in that way. So 400 times 1.84, might as well. And then times um, the change in temperature. Q equals C times M times delta T. So delta T would be the change. And it tells us the temperature increase of 21 degrees Celsius. So this is a case where we don't have to calculate it because it tells us it goes up by that. It increases by this. So it's just going to be 21. Um, and it is in degrees Celsius. So now that we've got that, we can just solve for Q. 1.35 times 400 times 1.084 times 21. And so I get Q is equal to 20,865.6 calories. Still need to convert it, so let's just go ahead and do our conversion factor right here, our conversion table. So we'd say that one calorie is equal to 4.184 joules. Get so familiar with this one when you're doing calorimetry problems. So then 1,000 joules is one kilojoule, and so that gives us a value of Q in kilojoules of 20,865.6 20, times 4.184 times 1 divided by 1 divided by 1,000, and that comes out that I'm getting 87.30167 kilojoules is what I get. Now, because of the fact that that is a gain of heat by the water, that meant that our reaction system had to lose that heat. And so Q for the reaction will be negative 87.3016. And so um, I'm just going to write them up here. So our delta H, I know this is sort of bad math, but uh, med notation, but I'm going to do it anyway, just for space reasons. So 87.301, negative, sorry, negative 87.30167 kilojoules divided by 0.152. 224010 moles reaction. Doing that ends up uh, getting negative 573.447 kilojoules per mole is going to be our, our delta H naught right there. Um, and that is negative, which would mean it's an exothermic reaction, which would be consistent with the increase in temperature. That makes sense. Last thing we need to do is we do need to check our, um, our sig figs.
before we get our final final answer and so sig fig wise here 7.0 has two sig figs that means that we should have one two sig figs right there um, in terms of the 87.3 that originally came from original values here three sig figs right here for this one so that's got three sig figs. The 400 is spelled out, so that's the infinite sig figs right there. 1.84 hell, so had three sig figs. The 21 has two sig figs, because it's just no decimal after it. So that means Q should have two sig figs. So that has two right here. They both have two, so that means we should just round this to two significant figures. So negative 573 would just turn into negative 570 kilojoules per mole.